So, you decide to give a ball a good kick across the floor. It goes flying. But here's the cool part. For those few seconds it's soaring through the air, you're not just witnessing the usual three dimension of height, width, and depth. But there's another dimension in play. Time. Now, I know what you're thinking. How on earth can we see time? Well, we can't exactly see time itself, but we can observe its effects. And what better way to do that than by watching the ball's movement? As it travels through space, we get a glimpse of that progression of time. It's like a sneak peek into the fourth dimension. But when we dive into discussions about space-time, we often throw in an extra dimension, the fifth one. Think of it as a micro-dimension, not as obvious as the other four. You won't spot it just by kicking a ball around. In the epic movie Interstellar, there's this whole thing about these fifth dimension beings secretly helping out the main characters. These beings are from another realm or something, and they hook them up with a sweet spaceship and a super convenient wormhole for intergalactic travel. At the end of the film, they go through a black hole and end up in this crazy library of infinite knowledge. And those mysterious beings are actually McConaughey himself. Before we get too deep, let's start with the building blocks of everything in this universe. Point. Yep, that tiny little dot holds the key to it all. Let's label it as zero dimension. Dimension number one is just a line, a super skinny line stretching from point A to point B, like a tightrope walker defying gravity. It's like a ghostly concept that we can understand, but in reality, our world is all about things we can touch and see. Even the tiniest stuff around us has some length and width, unlike this elusive line. Dimension number two is a plane. When you take a line and give it some width, you got yourself a plane. It's like a flat surface that you can view head on. Think floors, ceilings, tabletops, TV screens, and movie screens. As easy as it is to imagine a plane, it just can't quite exist in our reality. Yep, even sheets of paper have some depth to them. However, you've seen the second dimension if you've ever watched any pre-internet cartoon. Typically, all the vintage cartoons out there are two-dimensional. Now, welcome dimension number three, which is space. It's the one we call our own. When you add a little something to a line, it magically transforms into a plane. And guess what? When you blow it up from a different angle, that plane becomes an object in our super cool world. We're all about length, width, and depth here. They're totally our jam. Time is dimension number four. Close your eyes and imagine yourself right now, in this very moment. Now picture yourself two minutes ago. Or how about two days ago? Wait, let's take it up a notch. Two years ago. And what about two centuries ago? Now here's where things get funky. Imagine all these versions of yourself from different points in time, connected along a timeline. It's like you're physically linked to each of these variations of yourself. It may sound complicated, but in reality, the jump from the third dimension to the fourth dimension is just like the previous jumps we've made. Imagine you're looking at a line. If you change your perspective a bit, that line becomes a whole plane. It's like a revelation that the super skinny line you saw before was just one part of a bigger physical object, its length to be exact. Now let's take it a step further. When you shift your gaze from the plane to an everyday object or even a person, that plane becomes like a frozen snapshot of that thing. It's just one side of it without any depth or perspective. But if you physically turn around and look at that single face, you're entering dimension three. If you repeat this process once again, you'll find yourself in dimension four. Now you're not just looking at an object from its three special dimensions, but you're seeing it as one face of a timeline. It's like realizing that any object we know is just one part of a whole timeline. If you could step outside of time and zip across that timeline, you'd witness all the different versions of that object, its past, present, and future. Like flipping through a crazy flipbook. It's like having all those individual frames strung together forever in both directions. And what about dimension number five? This is where we find McConaughey in that bookcase scene. Get ready to leave the fourth dimension behind and dive into a world of endless possibilities. 
You see, those physical manifestations we witness are just one side of the story. They represent the realm of possibility. Now imagine a timeline as a bunch of possibilities stemming from a single moment. Let's use your birth as an example. Each moment in your life is like a face on a never-ending you from the fourth dimension's perspective. Now picture this timeline as just one face on a crazy object made up of countless other timelines. Each line represents all the different moments and faces that could have happened after your birth. It's like the fifth dimension's view of you. Back in 1905, Albert Einstein dropped some pretty cool knowledge on us with his special theory of relativity. He revealed that space and time are all tied together by the speed limit of light. So technically, our universe has four dimensions of space-time. But for our everyday lives, we like to keep things simple and think of the universe as having three dimensions of space. You know, north, south, east, west, up, down, and one dimension of time which is past and future. Easy peasy. In the 1920s, a couple of genius physicists named Oscar Klein and Theodore Kaluza were like, hey, what if there's a fifth dimension of space? They got this wild idea from Einstein's theory of relativity, which showed that mass can warp space-time. So they wondered, could this extra dimension explain another force called the electromagnetic force? Turns out, it totally could. But here's the catch. The electromagnetic force is way stronger than gravity, like 1,040 times stronger. So for this extra dimension to work its magic, it had to be super tiny. We're talking smaller than an atom, like microscopic small, so small that we wouldn't even notice it. Picture a particle, like an electron, zipping through space and doing loop-de-loops around this fifth dimension, like a little hamster on a wheel. Kaluza and Klein's five-dimensional theory got hit hard when two more fundamental forces were discovered in the atomic nucleus, the strong and weak nuclear forces. But many other scientists who believe in string theory brought back the idea of extra dimensions explaining forces, and it's been about half a century since then. According to this theory, the universe's fundamental building blocks are not particles, but these super tiny strings made of mass energy. These strings do their thing by vibrating in a 10-dimensional space-time, with six of those dimensions rolled up way smaller than an atom. String theory suggests that our universe might be like a three-dimensional island, or a brain, just floating around in this massive 10-dimensional space-time. This could explain why gravity is so ridiculously weak compared to the other three fundamental forces. The idea is that while the forces are stuck on the brain, Gravity sneaks out into those six extra space dimensions, making it super diluted on the brain. In 1999, Lisa Randall and Raman Sundram had a mind-bending idea. They suggested that there could be a bigger fifth dimension, all curved in a way that we can't even see. And this extra dimension might solve one of the biggest mysteries of the cosmos, dark matter. You know, that invisible stuff that outweighs all the visible stars and galaxies by six times? Yeah, it might just be hiding in that mysterious extra dimension.